Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. I'm going to be doing some test hands for you with my Invoked Dogmatica deck. Um, unfortunately, with the setup that I've got, I've had to do this upside down, so I'll be flipping the camera around, so it'll make sense when you're looking at it, but the angle looks, might look slightly off. That's exactly why. Let me apologise in advance if there's any noises. I'm preempting the dog coming in, making an absolute shit ton coming in now. He's a pug, so he already breathes badly anyway. Uh, he's really excited about the fact that I'm talking out loud, so he thinks I'm talking to him. So, of course, naturally, he's very excited to be here, and of course, he's grunting the other side of the kitchen. So, be prepared for a bit of background noise. Hopefully, not too much of that anyway. But we're going to get stuck in. I'm going to do some test hands and talk through the kind of lines of play that I would go into. If you haven't seen the deck profile to accompany this yet, you should go and check that out so it'll make more sense about what's going on with that. And if you're looking to pick up any singles to, for the deck or going forward, you should check out Jam Jam Cards UK. The link is in the description. Get yourself a nice discount uh, courtesy of yours truly using the link that's there. Uh, and if you're interested in getting signed cards or anything like that, that can be arranged for you as well. Uh, without much more messing around though, let's get stuck into the test hand. So let's see how we get on. I'm just going to do a quick shuffle here just again, just to show you I haven't like stacked it or anything like that. Be prepared for the worst hand in the world now. Uh, so we're going to start off with this. Okay, so we've got Alistair. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're in a pretty decent position to be fair off this hand. Uh, it's not terrible at all. Okay, so I managed to fuck it up whilst I was recording it. So this is the hand that we drew. I uh, just want to show you what a basic start off would be. That would be why you see the jump cut there. I haven't rigged the hand or anything, don't worry. Uh, so this is what you would start off with. You would go Alistair. Uh, usually this is going to get stopped, but on the assumption it doesn't, we can add Invocation. Trust me to fuck it up on my first recording. Uh, and then from here we go Link uh, into this one, and then Link into this. That immediately now has given us materials for Purgatrio if we need it, or for Mechaba, which is going to be the usual go-to. Now what you need to do here is, of course, be mindful of the fact that uh, if we're using the Deer Servant at this stage, we're going to lock ourselves out, so we don't want to do that. Uh, so at this stage we would go Invocation, uh, use these two. Uh, banish those to make our Mechaba. Uh, we'll go with this one. You can put it whichever zone you like. I don't like to put it under the extra monster zones. We'll have to imagine they're here because they're not on this. Um, hang on. Let me just make sense of this. There we go. That's our that's our field center. Um, so I would never really put it under either of the extra monster zones because there are, of course, some with up arrows that can cause you some grief. Normally, I like to go for this zone or the middle one. Uh, so we'll just have it there because it's, well, center of the shot. So let's go with that. Then, of course, we're going to do Invocation Effect of the Grave. Uh, put it back onto our deck. Add Alistair back to our hand. So we, now we've got a mecha bus. We've got a negate regardless of what happens. If our opponent tries to Nibiru us, we're in a really strong position that they're not going to be able to do anything. Um, okay, so we go with Nadir Servant. Again, a lot of the time this doesn't actually get stopped, which I find strange, but there you go. Uh, we're going to add Ecclesia. This is going to get your whole engine going. And you're going to see how strong this board is just off of this alone. Uh, it's actually a pretty good hand, to be fair. Um, okay, Nadir. Uh, so, sorry, Nadir is going to send uh, Titanoclad uh, to search the Ecclesia. This is going to help us search during the end phase, which is really important at this stage. There are other options you could consider from the extra deck, but most of them don't really do anything on turn one. So, of course, stuff that you probably won't want to do. You could send this, but I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, I think Titanoclad's probably correct in this scenario. Uh, okay, so this is our hand now. Uh, so again, still a really, really strong hand. We can do an awful lot with this in terms of during our opponent's turn. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to special summon the Ecclesia. Uh, Ecclesia's effect is going to go off. Again, we're all working on the assumption here that this all goes through. Uh, a lot of the time it won't, but we have got a protection at this stage anyway. So if our opponent's not moved yet, they're probably in trouble. And then in terms of the actions we want to take on this turn, of course we're going to set this. So we'll have it here. So that's our punishment. We probably set the Imperm as well. Again, they don't know we've got it. I'm showing you the hand up so you can just see what we're working with here. And then during the end phase, Titanic is going to search for us. And he's going to add Fleur de Lis in this scenario. So then we're going into our opponent's turn with an Effect Veiler, an Ash Blossom, uh, a Live Fleur. We've got Mechaba. 
And we've got these two as our back row. And again, that's a really strong hand for you to start off with. Puts you in a really good position. Most uh, most uh, decks won't play through this. Uh, and usually, if you can open that hand uh, uninterrupted, you, you've you won. Uh, and that, that comes up more than you realize. Because really, to start that entire thing off, all we needed was um, a way into the Invoked Engine and a way into uh, the Ligma Engine as well. And again, you run so many cards. Uh, obviously, this is effectively six copies of Ecclesia. Uh, you're running however many copies of Alistair. It's really, really common that it comes up. Uh, and it's something you should expect to do quite a lot. But we'll go on to another test hand just to give you some more ideas of what can happen. Again, hopefully we'll get a brick hand here as well so you can see what it's like when you do brick. Just so you can get some ideas. Okay, so let's see what our test hands bring us this time. Okay, Brick. It's a good start. Uh, okay, so it's not the best hand. Let's put it that way. Um, so at this stage, you pretty much accept that this is going to be your normal summon, and you have to hope that it goes through. Otherwise, your hand is going to be sort of really subpar, quite frankly. Um, so... <laughs> really, you're just going to go normal summon. Um, this is, again, assuming you're going first, because that's what we're going to do in these scenarios. We'll run through some going second hands. Uh, assuming this goes through, um, you can just search probably punishment at this stage, I would recommend, just so you've got a layer of protection. Um, it is worth noting that you've got like a couple of interrupts going into your opponent's turn, but it's just not ideal. So we have punishment. Uh, if that gets stopped, your not in a great position obviously assuming it goes through you would set this past your turn and then you've got these two to interrupt your opponent as well as the punishment um assuming that gets stopped of course you're in a position where you don't have punishment um and hopefully they haven't gammed this so that you can actually play uh so again in that case you'd have these two to interrupt um which again, this is this is only worthy when they they get to the point where they're starting to build a board which can be a bit of a problem on its own if this gets gammered, uh, we can safely say you're fucked. Okay, so hopefully this is a better hand than the last one. Let's have a look. <laughs> okay, uh, so that's certainly a hand. I mean, look, I guess it's not the worst. It's also not the best. Um, we can still play with this. That's fine. So... Okay, so there's a few things you want to think about here. So there's a good chance that our opponent is playing Droll, particularly if this is after game one. So with that in mind, I would probably start off with the Alistair. Um, Meltdown, although it can bait something like a, an Ash or whatever, um, if they've got Droll, then they're going to Droll us on the Alistair, and then our turn basically ends there. So I would normally go in this scenario for Alistair. Uh, Alistair's going to attempt to search. And what I'll do here is I'll just show you what we do um on, under both scenarios so we'd add invocation so we'll talk through what we would do in both cases here so assuming we haven't been drolled here uh, we can go about our full plays so um personally at this stage uh, i'd be looking to kind of juice things a little bit i'd be playing uh, meltdown again just hoping to 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 bait some cards out here um so we go meltdown search the alley uh, the sad thing here is that we know we've got all three they think we've only got two because they don't know what's in our hand yet um, so we get our third Alistair here, add that to our hand. And again, it just adds more resources. It makes it a little bit better for, for playing the line further on. Um, we're going to link this off. We'll put it there. Uh, you know the drill by now, of course, if you paid attention to the first video. If you didn't, well, fuck you. You make this and then this. Um, we can go Invo. Uh, you've got two options here. You could banish the, the, the one from Grave. Uh, or you could dump one from hand. I personally would obviously recommend the one from Grave because, well, you want to be able to recycle stuff. Um, so those go away into our uh, Mecha Butt. Uh, Invo Effect in Grave, we'll put it back. To add Ali back to hand. So we've got triple Alistair here. If nothing else, this is going to be absolutely fucking huge. But we've got free material for it as well, which is nice. Uh, we then go Ecclesia. Um, and then in this case, uh, given that we've already got a negate on board and that we've got Imperm that we're going to set, I would probably search Punishment in this scenario because it's going to give you the most value. Uh, you've already got at least one negate here in terms of monster effects and then potentially a second one here. Um, so yeah, again, I would recommend probably in this scenario here, we're going to go for punishment, although you could go for flow if that's something you prefer. Again, I just think that this is probably the better option in this scenario. 
Um, so then normally to finish off the turn, I'd be setting these two traps here, which gives us these two interrupts and one more interrupt here. Now, assuming that we get drolled earlier on, you're going to see me cut screen here and, and kind of fix this back to the way it was. Okay, so in, in this way, we're going to assume that our opponent drolls us just so we've got some ideas of what we could do. Uh, again, it's not going to be anywhere near as strong because droll really fucking hurts this deck. Uh, but again, we would start off with a normal summon. Uh, if you're ever in this kind of scenario, it's always going to be this. You want a normal summon first because if they're going to droll you, at least you can get your fusion. So we'll add not forbidden droplet, although that would be nice. Uh, we are going to add invocation to our hand. Uh, okay, so Invo gets added, and then we get drolled. So we now know we're in a position where we're not going to be able to add to our hand, so Ecclesia is now dead, so you have to consider how you want to do this. So I think regardless in this scenario, you would still go down your line of play, uh, go Alistair uh, into this, into this. Uh, you go Invocation, uh, banish these two. Um, to make our Mechaba uh, Invo effect. Add this back to hand. So this is where it really changes things being drolled. So where the scenario we're in here now is this no longer does anything. Uh, this no longer does anything really either. Um, it kind of puts us in an awkward position. So you've got two options here. You could commit to this play, just get the extra body on board, hope that it does something for you. Personally, I think that's a waste of resources in this scenario. I think you're probably better off keeping this in your hand uh, for next turn so that you've got a bit more longevity. You're going to have multiple ways to protect this, of course, with two copies of Alistair available to you. Um, and the next turn, you, you're going to have access to the third and start your in, invoked plays again. You're going to have an imperm on board as well, so you are still going to have two interrupts, which isn't quite as good, of course, as having the third and fourth interrupt. But again, having two interrupts is better than none. So in this scenario, I would end by just setting the imperm probably underneath this because you want to hit that middle zone because people are stupid. Um and probably pass on that so in this case we'd end on that we'd still have these four in hand so we can make our big boy bigger uh we've got uh negate if we need to and the next time we've got access to these two and this to start setting up our next line of plays now hopefully that wasn't too messy for you and hopefully it makes enough sense again i'm doing this a little bit upside down it's a bit weird watching this on camera and seeing it backwards uh so we'll we'll, we'll do the same thing again but we'll have a look at some hands what you would do maybe if you were going second uh and we'll talk through some potential scenarios that you could be facing in in that case and uh sort of discuss what you might do Okay, so we're going to do three hands again. We're going to do this as if we're going second. Um, so this is, of course, going to be a bullshit hand. Okay, right. So if we were going first, this isn't actually the worst hand in the world, but we're going second in this scenario. So we know that we've got one interrupt guaranteed, right? So uh, let's let's assume that this has been used. Our opponent's ended on a board of, like, one negate. So we draw for turn, we've got effect failure. This does fuck all for us in this scenario. Now, if we go uninterrupted, we've got both sides of our engine and we're probably going to win. Um, if we go Alistair and assume he gets hit, so we'll go Alistair. Uh, Alistair gets stopped uh, in this scenario. Um, I would probably still link it off so that we can set everything else up. So let's say they've used their one interrupt, their one hand trap, whatever. Uh, so we'll do the usual this, uh, this. Sorry, again, this is a little bit messy, but you'll get the idea. Um, just again, so that we've got this on the board. This is off now. Uh, and this means that now our servant target is live. So we can go servant, uh, search Ecclesia. Uh, and again, thinking about what we're going to do with Ecclesia here. So this, again, you've got a couple of options. Sorry, I'll send to the grave as well. We can do something... I would probably be assuming in this scenario we're going to pop something. Uh, but if not, I would send Titanoclad so we've got an extra option for next turn. Uh, so we'll send Entis because he's going to pop something on their board. And let's assume that they're now out of interrupt. So we go Ecclesia. Ecclesia is going to search for us. Assuming we haven't been drolled, uh, which, of course, the Alistair would have gone through in that scenario. So we won't talk too much through that. Uh, so we go this. So in this case, again, I would probably search Punishment, uh, given the fact that we've effectively got two monster negates here. Um, 
so then the two monster negates with this will be would be a good position to be in uh, even if we can't be aggressive towards our opponent now if our opponent's got nothing we could get again more aggressive so instead of punishment we could search uh ashian wherever the fuck it's called um as an option where is he wolverine uh, so you could search this instead so again if you wanted to um sort of push for a little bit more damage there's ways of doing that it's a little bit harder of course when we're locked out of the extra deck because we can't just like link these off to special summon him but again it just gives you options um so yeah in, in this scenario though i would go for punishment so we've then got punishment and two monster negates so going into our next turn we have this and then these two as interrupts or of course we can get an extra body on board now if that's something we wanted to do to push for damage or so something to consider um if you're playing a variant with dingesu which is something that i would uh, recommend trying out then of course if we did uh, add this and we've also got the option to go into digging gear two later on if that's something we want to do and again these test hands are just to give you some idea of things that you could try out uh, as and when you're playing things to consider uh, it's not going to be perfect i'm definitely not a perfect player that's for sure um i'm a yugi tuber so naturally i'm fucking bad at this game luckily i've played this into the ground though so i've got some idea of what to do in most scenarios um so yeah let's Let's see what the next hand is like. Again, we'll just do a couple more of these now. Uh, so we'll do one more after this one. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we're going second. Um, as it stands, we're not doing a lot in our turn. Um, however, our opponent isn't allowed to play Yu-Gi-Oh! So that's not the worst in that sense. So really, this boils down to what do we draw for turn? Um, Mystic Mine. <laughs> okay, so here's what happens in this scenario. Uh, you play this. And then you win. Genuinely, a lot of the time, like, this is going to do so much damage and stop them so far with all of these. That if you play Mystic Mine uh, and they've got a monster on the field, then you're basically in a position to win. Because you're going to be drawing for, like, ten turns before they can either out it or uh, you just deck them out. Because they'll have started comboing and going off and they'll probably be further into their deck than you are. Uh, unless you're kind of unlucky and you're playing against 60 cards, in which case it'll just stall for you for a while. So Mystic Mind saves today. And this is what I mean about Mystic Mind. Like in this game here, we would go in second. We probably have no real right to win. Um, the fact that we've opened three interrupts is pretty broken. Um, but even two might be enough that going into your next turn... Uh, you can just go Mystic Mind again and just win. Um, so yeah, something to keep in mind. And uh, Mystic Mind saves the day in this scenario. Okay, our final test hand for going second. So let's see what we get brought to us. Uh, okay, so this is interesting. So uh, in, in most cases, like even with the Mystic Mind here, if you were going first, this is a really good hand. Like you've got access to both parts of your engine. Assuming they don't get stopped or you don't get cucked completely, you can play. Uh, going second, it's not quite as strong. You have the Ash, of course, to stop one of their plays. Hopefully you're against a rogue deck and this is enough. If not, of course, you've got Mystic Mind, but we're, we're going to draw for turn. Uh, okay, so we've got Imperb. So if you needed to force a negate or bait one, that could allow you to play this and this is an option or of course if you can force a negate that allows your alice to go through then you're in a good position so let's uh take a look at a couple of scenarios so we go in perm in this case uh we'll just assume they've got a monster here let's say we use the ash last turn as well um so this is our hand at the moment so again depending on what's on the board depends on what you do again you could just be cheeky and just go mine sometimes this is good even just to bait stuff because they have to stop it otherwise they probably lose um Let's assume that mine's going to get us nowhere in this scenario, though. So we'll ignore mine. Uh, so we'll, again, we'll just go down our usual line of plays. Alistair. Um, if they stop the Alistair because they think they're in a good position, this is fine because we've got the invocation. And this is why, if you watch the deck profile, this is where the third one of these can really come up and come in clutch. Unfortunately, I'm not playing it in this particular build, but I would recommend it. Uh, so we just link off in this case. Uh, we'll do our usual line of plays. They're never going to stop this. No one ever does. Um, it has happened, to be fair. I've been cherried on... I think this, uh, and it, it's it's real bullshit. Um, yeah, that's that's Sam Link and uh, who uh, that's Sam who who does that shit, and it, it pisses me off. But let's not get into that. Um, okay, so we've got Invo. We can go Invo. Uh, we've got Alistar and Secure Gardener. They can go off to there. So we've got Mechaba. Um, but again, you've got options if they've got quite a fairly open board. You've got two ways you can do it. You can go into Mechaba to give you in a gate for later on, or if you find yourself in the scenario where they've got no protection but maybe a few bodies on board, you could potentially just go with these two, or Ash, of course, as well as another option, uh, and make Purgatrio. 
Um, and then that puts you in a good position to obviously push for damage. This will help protect your board a little bit as well. Well, not protect your board, protect your life points a bit. Uh, so Invo Effect is going to add Ali back to hand. Uh, and then we're in a position where we can go Ecclesia. And again, if you're pushing for damage, you can probably just summon her in attack. If you're not sure, you just put her in defense. So we go defense mode. Uh, probably not there because we don't like mech knights. Uh, we go effect. This now locks us out of the extra deck, so we're not doing any more of that this turn. Uh, and then again, you've got two options here. So depending on whether you went for Purgatrio or Mechaba here, depends on what I would search. So, And also, of course, you need to read the game and see what's going on. So... A lot of the time, if I've got Mechaba here, I wouldn't make the, I wouldn't get Fleur because you've got the negate and interrupt. Uh, or you could go for the second one if you think that they've got a deck that would warrant having those extra monster negates in your hand. Uh, so again, you've got the option of Fleur is one of them. Uh, or you've got the option of Punishment. So Fleur can also be used here to push for extra damage. Like if you think you can get game, then you get Fleur as well because you can go uh, big Fleur here. If that's the case, though, you would have summoned this in attack and push for major damage. Uh, on the assumption you don't know, you'd add Fleur and have it for the negate. Or you'd add punishment, enable to set you up for next turn, push for a bunch of damage now, and then stop your opponent playing next turn, then kill them the turn after. So again, a few different options there to consider, um, but that's probably the way I would play it. In, again, in most scenarios, I'm probably going to go for the punishment um, and the, the mechaba, but there's alternative scenarios where you might go for this and Purgatrio. Again, some scenarios where you go for both as well. And hopefully that all made sense. Of course, test hands, they are just one of those things where we sort of draw and hope for the best, uh, hoping we weren't going to brick too bad. And uh, the one time we did Mystic Mind save today, and that is a very common occurrence um, when you do brick that you'll get a card like Mystic Mind will come up. And, and this is the thing I like about having it main decked, because once you side deck, you know what you're building against, uh, and then you don't have to worry too much. But in, in these kind of scenarios, it's, it's really good for this kind of stuff. And that is all for today's video. Thank you very much for checking in. If you've made it this far, big well done to you. You may have uh, some problems and you may want to go seek some help, but there you go. Thank you very much for making it this far. Hopefully you've hit subscribe if you have, because you will have enjoyed it this much. So made it through 20 odd minutes of footage. That'd be pretty incredible. Uh, if, again, if you're looking for the singles for this deck, check out Jam Jam Card UK. Link in the description logo over here, as you can see, uh, and get yourself a nice discount courtesy of myself on their eBay store. Uh, thanks again for checking in, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.